hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the subject of Google Photos and NAS. Now a number of you in 2020 may already be aware but if you did just hear about it and you're Googling now a number of you may know that in June 2021 Google is going to suspend the service of unlimited photo storage to Google Photos. What that means in real terms is if you've got an Android phone, be it a high-end Pixel or something, or some of the mid-range Samsung stuff and all the other Android phones in between, the result is that at the moment you can upload as many photos as you want to your Google Drive, your Google Shared Storage, your Google Photos, without any worry about it filling up. But from June onwards, the photos you upload from there, be it automatically with photo backup built into um, Google Photos, or doing it manually, it will begin to take up that space. Now, most users who have an Android phone or a client device or you know a tablet or anything like that, generally you have the free 15 gig of storage. You can get a little bit more when you first get a Google device. They offer you a few promos to get from 15 to 25 to 50 to 100 gig of space. But again, that's for a limited time. And then after one or two years, that space will revert to the free 15 gig of storage. So unless you are using an existing paid Google Drive space, most users only have 15 gig of Google space. Now, at the moment, that Google space, that Google Drive space is shared between Google Photos, a Gmail, um, uh, Google Drive services like uh, Google, sh um, uh, the document services like Sheets and stuff like that. All of those Google services, with the exception of YouTube, thanks for watching, um, share that space. Now, the minute in June, in June 2021, those photos start taking up real space, your Google Drive, that 15 gig, is going to fill up real quick. Even if the photos are compressed. Um, they're still going to take up lots and lots of space. The result being that if your Google Drive fills up that 15 gig, services will stop working, such as your Gmail will stop running properly until you make space for attachments and general back and forth of storing all those mails, but also shared space on shared drives will cease to allow it to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, and you'll be forced to make deletion. So, what do you do moving forward? Well, you've got one of two main options if you want to continue storing data in this way. The first one is to subscribe and pay for the Google Drive services. They have currently four main tiers for Google Drive users, and these are a 15 gig free area of storage that anyone that has a Gmail can utilize. And again, there are pay for subscription increases if you like there. Then there's a 100 gig um, storage space that is $15.99 per year, and that's pounds. Then you have a 200 gig space that is $24.99 a year, and you can go up to a 2 terabyte area of space, which is $79.99 a year. So you've got free, 16 quid thereabouts, 25 quid thereabouts, and 80 quid thereabouts. Now, as useful as those sound, remember, they are annual amounts you will have to pay. And if you fill up that space, you will have to delete. On top of that, if you stop paying that subscription, the limit of that drive will revert back to 15 gig. It won't delete the data for the first, I think it's 60 or 90 days, but all the connected services will stop running. Now, another thing that's interesting about all of those storage um, tiers is the amount. So 15 gig uh, for free. If you try to get a USB stick, you can get a 16 gig USB stick for about three quid right now. And again, it doesn't have all the cloud services in the worldwide access and all that stuff, but there's still no avoiding that 15 gig is about three quid of USB. A 100 gig, well, you can get um, 250 gig um, external hard drive, again, for about £15. So it's 15 quid for 100 gig of Google space and about 15 quid for more than double that on a USB drive. Next, you can go up to the next tier of 200 gig of cloud space. Well, again, you can spend around 23, 24 quid to get between 200 odd and 500 gig of storage on a USB. And then right at the top end, 2TB, you can get a 2TB drive easily for 50 or 60 quid these days. Hopefully there's a diagram there on screen. The point I'm making there is the amount of storage you're getting and the amount that you're paying, the amount that you're paying is actually more for the access services. It's for the um, cloud backup. It's for 
the entire service as a whole. You're not just paying for that storage, you are paying for the services that go along with the price tag of Google Photos and Google Drive. Now, I mentioned there was another way to do it, and of course, it is network attached storage. It is the ability to move away from Google Cloud Services and move to your own private server utilizing a NAS system like this. This is a Synology DS220J. It's about 200 NICA, uh, this device. And again, this is without hard drives. You will have to put a drive inside. Drives retail for about 30, 40 quid per terabyte. So you can probably get this for about 250 odd quid with um, a good degree of storage, a couple of terabytes of storage inside there. Now remember, Google were charging about 80 quid for 2 TB of online storage. I'm talking about two to 250 quid for this with 2 TB of storage. Why on earth would you go for this? And that's the second part of today's video. Why on earth should you choose um, NAS over Google Photos? Network attached storage is not a new thing. It's been around for more than, in some cases, 15 or 20 years in one form or another. It takes the same logic behind standard hard drives that you connect to your PC or Mac system, but it does it via the network. These can also be accessed anywhere in the world. They can be accessed locally over the network and give certain benefits in terms of performance that are just not available on the cloud. On top of that, it is the idea that a NAS system is yours. With a cloud service, after a certain period of time, maybe a year or two years of subscription, if you try to quit it, that data has to go somewhere. You can't just leave it on the cloud and let you know them delete it. You kept it for a reason. So inevitably, you're going to have to buy a storage device eventually anyway. And I'm gonna talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of Google Photos and a NAS system. Why you might consider one more than the other, should you make the jump to NAS or are you better off with Google Photos? So first off, let's talk about Google Photos. Google Photos, the advantages. The first advantage is crystal clear. It is so much lower in terms of startup cost. We've already touched it. Even the lowest tier um, that you had to pay for there was so cheap, it was unreal. And the result was that you could get that 100 gig of storage real, real easy for about 15 quid. Now, you can't get drives that small on a NAS. The smallest you can get is to buy a one bay or a two bay NAS and get a one TB drive inside. You're still looking at about 200 quid. So Google Photos easily has the lowest cost of the two. The startup cost of Google Photos is considerably lower. Secondly, Google Photos, the software is included. Everything you do, whether it's the phone you're using, a tablet you're using, whatever device you are viewing it on, be it Google Chrome, whatever, you kind of have the software already. It's all inclusive with the Google Photos package because the in most cases, the device that you use to take the photos that you're backing up is actually full of the software to back up to the cloud there with Google Photos. Next, Google Photos is by far the more user friendly. NAS isn't that tough, it's incredibly easy these days, but there's no avoiding it. Using Google Photos and backing up to Google Photos and using Google Drive to look at files and photos, and again, that's moving slightly away from photos, it's just that bit easier with Google um, Drive and Google Photos because you're accessing it either with a mobile phone and the app's already built in as a stock app, or you're using um, Google Chrome and just going to googledrive.com and accessing uh, a one portal access point there. So using Google Photos and Google Drive is incredibly easy and it's very, very cheap on day one, but it's not perfect. First and foremost, it has much higher long-term costs. The minute you look at larger capacities and the minute you're backing up videos or backing up business files, you will find that you will hit the hundreds of gig and terabytes very, very quickly. And as you spend that money each year, be it you know, 50, 80, 100 quid or whatever it is per year, that money will mount up. And within two to three years, you will spend more on the cloud than you will on a NAS. So consequently, because you're gonna to have to get that data off there eventually, it's actually cheaper in the long run to buy a NAS straight away, rather than going for a cloud. Cloud, biggest disadvantage is always going to be that it costs more in the long run. On top of that, it's a question of what's happening with your data. Now, this is obviously a delicate subject when it comes to what happens when you upload your data. 
But I think if you look at any terms and conditions of any of these cloud providers, which we have done in the past at NAS Compares, you can see that there is a degree of flexibility about how your data may be used to improve their services, to improve the inclusive features. And I think a lot of what we know these days about photo recognition and AI powered recognition has stemmed from a lot of photos being accessed and browsed and identified very, very quickly. And I think it would be remiss not to at least consider the idea that information that's kept to Google, uh, that's on Google Photos stored online is not because it's on a server right there for the picking that isn't used for some sort of analytical process or for photo recognition by a company for their own benefit. And it's definitely something to touch on there, particularly if your data is incredibly mission critical, but also incredibly confidential. And finally, the file safe on Google Photos and Google Drive is shared across all of those services, which means that by exceeding that storage, it can disrupt your email service. It can disrupt other things that you have running there on the background in a way that you almost have no control over. And you will have to minimize that space in order to keep other services running, something that you can make sure with internal quotas does not affect a NAS. And another disadvantage that is less relevant in the short term, but it's definitely worth touching on, is the amount of storage options available to cloud services is by no means as diverse as it is on a NAS. Look at those options we talked about earlier. There was only four readily available. And as good as Google Photos is, because I do use NAS and cloud services, I use both. There's not a lot of flexibility there, but let's move the scope slightly away from Google Photos and go straight back onto NAS there. What are the advantages and disadvantages of switching to a NAS? Well, let's go with the advantages, just like before. As mentioned, much lower price long term. There's definitely a better, um, um, you know, a return on your investment, um, an ROI on a NAS than there is on the cloud because you've got the system, you can keep it, and if you remove the cable from the back, You've still got a data storage system that can last for many, 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 many years. Um, another great advantage is the scalability, as touched on. A lot of these systems allow you to upgrade drives over time, have RAID systems that will allow you to um, improve performance and uh, safety nets. There's scalability and expandability that allow you to add expansion devices to add more storage on without having to delete your old storage. And that scalability across different hardware of NAS, different CPU and memory combinations, different hard drive combinations means it's incredibly diverse and scalable to your budget and your priorities. Next, it's worth highlighting that security is far more tailored here on a NAS because I think Google Cloud is incredibly secure, but the bigger you are, the bigger the target that's on your back in terms of data security. And I think we've all read at least once every couple of months some hack, some data breach, uh, such and such as information. Uh, thousands of users have been shared online. And it's because the bigger you are, the easier it is for um, users using bots and using brute force techniques to analyze how uh, security is maintained in a large system with multiple users all attacking independently to get a bit of bigger picture of security. And with Google Cloud Services, and specifically Google Photos for this video, you know, those security, it can't be that diverse. They've just got too many users. They need to have certain regimented security protocol, whereas with a NAS, it can be far more uh, bespoke in terms of its security. It has all the same AES encryption. It has two-step verification. It has D um, remote D uh, DDNS and stuff like that and firewall protection built in to a lot of these uh, smart switch and combination NAS switch devices. But also, there's the ultimate protection from outside access that you can just remove the Ethernet cable. And that's it. You can remove the internet connection to this device, but still maintain its connection on the local network. That's something you can never do with the cloud. The cloud will always need internet access in a way that the NAS doesn't. And also, of course, We've already touched on that. NASes can have a much larger total storage capacity. So you can upgrade the storage on these significantly higher, both in terms of the long-term archive and as raw storage right now on a NAS than you can ever on Google Drive and Google Photos. For that kind of storage, you have to move to the next tier of cloud storage. When you're looking at AWS, and you're talking about blob storage and stuff like that, hyperscale. And once you enter that realm, 
you are way outside the remit of Google Photos, and that's when there are NAS devices to accompany that. But again, NAS ain't perfect. First and foremost, we've already talked about the higher initial price tag. Even the cheapest of the cheap NAS of a cheap one bay is still 100 to 120 quid without a hard drive. Stick a decent enough hard drive inside that you're still looking at a 200 quid spend. That is a lot of wallop to put down early doors, and I think a lot of you will be less inclined to do that on a system that you haven't used whereas google photos a platform you might be moving from you know you're used to it it does the job so i can understand that, that initial startup cost will be a downer for some also the setup of nas takes longer be it from raid configuration to physically setting the device up for other users it's not brain surgery it's not tough and you can knock it out in half an hour to an hour if you know what you're doing but the fact still remains it will take longer than just setting up a Google account and setting up your Google Photos because it's all built into our phones and tablets and more. Finally, there's a little bit of setup knowledge. Now, you don't need to be, you know, some IT whiz to set one of these up. They're actually painfully simple with lots of guides online, both official and unofficial from guys like me. Um, but there's no avoiding that the setup time is still a little bit tougher. There's a tiny bit of a learning curve compared to that of Google Cloud Services, which has got a real handhold attitude to setting things up. And I think it does pay them dividends long run. So those are the main advantages and disadvantages of Google Photos and, of course, network attached storage. But let's talk a little bit more about NAS for you guys that aren't too aware of the whole thing and the software and the applications you get with it because it's so easy, as mentioned, to just be overly reliant on the Google services. We know them. We know Gmail. We know um, Google Photos. We know all of those bits and bobs and services because we've been using them for years. And going into a new platform, we can understand that a lot of their software and attributes are just unknown to us. We don't know where to start. Well, it's worth highlighting that uh, the main two guys in the whole kind of NAS world, if you're making the move over from Google Photos, are definitely Synology and QNAP. These two brands bring a lot to the party. They've got whole operating systems that are accessible via web browser. They've got mobile applications that tailor for every kind of file type. And they are completely customizable and configurable to your needs. Their um, user interface is comparable to that of Android, Windows, iOS, and more. They are that user-friendly. And setting them up to back up your devices in the most bespoke way is actually not that tough. But each of them bring a lovely little frisson to the party about how it can handle your data. So first off, let's talk about Synology. Synology's main applications, for those of you making the switch from Google Photos to NAS that you should keep an eye on, um, they technically have three photo applications, but if you're watching this later in the year, they probably have just the one. Originally, they had uh, Synology Photo Station and Synology Moment. Synology Photo Station was kind of the business photographer kind of portfolio sharing and shoot sharing application that has so much background information uh, retrieved from metadata and photos that when you are browsing collections or sharing collections with family, with clients and more, it's just a great user interface to show off your photos, both from a business capacity and personally. But on top of that, you've got Synology Moments, which is an AI-powered um, deep learning photo application that um, will identify the contents of photos, group them together, create intelligently managed um, photo collections based on subjects of what's in the photos from trees to food to drinks to people and more with facial recognition rolled in as well and remember no subscription services it's all included inside with the NAS it's just there it's there when you need it now later as the latest version of their operating system DSM arrives DSM 7 they, these two applications are being merged into one, Synology Photos, which brings the advantages of both PhotoStation and Moments into one complete application. And it will allow you to completely manage from a personal or business fashion all of your albums and photography. But it isn't just limited to photography. You've got Synology Drive, which is comparable in many, many, many ways, and more, in fact, to Google Drive, a one portal access point that can be accessed by an application or a web browser to browse all of your files and photos on the NAS, regardless of their format, be they docs, photo, video, music, uh, zip files, PDF, you name it, it can open it all within the one portal access point with their own Office application too for docs, sheets, and more. And it is completely compatible with Google services as well. Now, 
That also has the ability to pin files locally to your system, so I do recommend you check out Synology Drive for more than just as a step up from Google Drive. It has its own unique stuff to bring to the party too. Uh, then when it comes to backing up, you've got the tool Hyper Backup that allows you to back up the data in your NAS in a number of different ways. Whether you want to back up to another NAS on the local area network, to you back up to your existing Google Cloud, you can connect those, or back up to a connected USB drive and therefore have another tier of storage backup from your data that you can take home in your bag or when you're out and about. There's lots of options there built into that and Hyper Backup is an incredibly diverse tool, but with the added benefit of Synology C2, they have their own cloud platform if you choose to use it that allows you to add another means of access with things like Hybrid Share, that allows you multiple ways to access your data in multiple locations, depending on the complexity and the security. But also, it's just a great way to create a fantastic data ecosystem with a hybrid NAS cloud system that makes sure that your data can be backed up anywhere in the world and that it is accessible yet safe. And that's really, really important to their whole brand. Now, QNAP, on the other hand, that although they keep it safe, it has to be said that they have a lot more diversity in their applications. And I would compare them most certainly if Synology are the Mac of things, then QNAP are certainly the Android. They have uh, PhotoStation and they have QMaggy, their AI powered photo recognition tool, both of which are far more analytical. I would say they give you a bit more information on everything and there's more diversity in how you interact with your data on the system, which brings us into Multimedia Console. Multimedia Console is this great background tool that indexes um, files on the NAS automatically in the background and presents data in the way that you want it to be done, browsing the albums that you want it to and the ones that not. And with more backup tools and more data safety tools on the QNAP platform ranging from hyper, um, sorry, hybrid backup sync, I would say is one of the best backup tools um, out there on any NAS platform right now to back up your data in a number of ways. Hybrid mount allowing you to bolt on additional storage as and when you see fit and a wide range of internal um, backup tools and recovery tools um, included uh, that protect you from malware, that protect you from intrusions, uh, from ransomware. You've got a uh, snapshot recovery on there built in, and all of this can be done internally with a range of expansion devices. They both have an enormous go uh, enormous amount of data storage solutions built behind them. It's not just about photos. But remember, if you are going to consider making the move from Google Photos towards NAS, you don't need to go this big. You can go quite small to be comparative to Google Photos. And remember, you can still use both platforms. Um, a lot of people that used Crash Plan before it became more of a paid subscription service were utilizing it in that fashion. And a lot of those people have now moved to NAS. And I think the same thing's gonna happen here with Google Photos. I love Google Photos and I still use it regularly. But there's no avoiding the fact that I do think NAS is better why don't you tell me if you agree or disagree? Thank you so much for watching. Do visit the link in the description to nascompares.com where we go into a lot more detail about the comparison between these services. There's a lot more advantages and disadvantages and this video has gone on long enough. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to learn more and I will see you next time.